let's give this bad boy a taste. We got some beans, we got some bell pepper, we got some turkey, and we got a chunk of cornbread right there. Hello friends and welcome back to Rachel's Baking Corner. Today we will be doing a savory recipe. We are going to do something that I found on Instagram. I will link the recipe and the user down below where you make chili, put it in a casserole dish, make cornbread batter and pour it on top like a little shell and then bake it together in the oven. First of all, I am new to this world of chili and cornbread coming together. I didn't know that was a thing until I met my fiance. He loves chili with cornbread. I make it on the side, he cuts it up and he puts it in his chili. I've tried it, it's fantastic. I do actually very much enjoy it. When I found this recipe just scrolling at like 10.30 at night, I was like, I have to make this. I also had a user named Gail comment and ask for a cornbread recipe. So. I'm actually not following the recipe from the Instagram user who I found this from. I'm just stealing her temperature and time and her idea for the bake. I will show you my personal recipe for chili and my favorite recipe for cornbread, which you obviously can make separately. And there you go, Gail. This is a good cornbread recipe, I promise you. And I like to think my chili is pretty good as well. So without further ado, we will talk ingredients, tools, order of operations, and we'll get bacon. I'm so We'll get cooking and then bacon, and I'm just so excited. Okay, <laughs> without further ado, let's start. So first things first, I've got my table divided. I have my cornbread recipe ingredients. I have my chili ingredients. Let's start with chili because this varies. So when I cook something, I am not usually following a recipe. I am usually following my heart <laughs> and my hunger and my flavor palette. Everyone is different, make it however you want. As long as you follow the basic recipe standards for chili slash soup, you can do it however the heck you want and however your palate likes it. So I personally don't just like beans and meat. I like there to be some hidden vegetables. I like colorful vegetables and I like flavor. And I just like knowing that my chili is nurturing me at the same time as it's feeding my soul, you know? So I chopped up a bunch of carrots, uh, maybe about a cup and a quarter. I just chopped up a bunch of carrots, maybe like three large carrots, whatever you like. Then I chopped up one orange bell pepper. You could use any color you want. This one happened to be on sale, so that's the one I picked. <laughs> chopped up into like little diced cubes, okay? And then I have half of a yellow onion, finely diced, and then three cloves of garlic, probably like medium-sized garlic, all in this bowl here. When it comes to beans, I just like the whole smorgibordy, okay? I like the black beans, I like the pinto beans and the kidney beans. And then we got a fat <laughs> jar. Uh, this is a can, not a jar. A fat can of crushed tomatoes. We are looking at a 28 ounce can of no salt added crushed tomatoes. I like to add some tomato paste to help thicken it up. We like a thick chili in this house. And then under all this, I have my ground turkey. I know, come for me. I am trying to be healthy. I'm trying to lose some weight, y'all. Um, this is a 93.7% lean ground turkey. You can use ground chicken. You can use ground beef. You can use whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. You can use bison for all I care. Whatever makes you happy at the end of the day. I'm just trying to be a little self-conscious. It is the holiday season, as you can probably see behind me. So. I gotta be careful with those calories, you know? So that's everything for the chili. Oh, hold. Duh. You'll want a packet of chili seasoning. <laughs> you could make your own chili seasoning if you've got all the ingredients in your pantry. I may, but I don't know, I didn't feel like doing it. I like just buying a McCormick or, um, you know, any kind of pre-packaged chili packet, and that will give us the flavors that we kind of want. I also kind of throw in my own things in there too, so. Ooh, that took a long time, I'm sorry. Let's talk 
cornbread now. The star of the show, in my opinion. When it comes to the cornbread, you're going to need, I had to really condense on bowls here, so you're gonna need one cup of flour, three fourths cup of cornmeal. That's what I have in this bowl here. Active ingredients. In here, I have half a teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of baking powder. The recipe says two, but only use one if you're using a small pan. I'm not using a small pan, but two just seemed like too much, so I just went with the one. And half a teaspoon of baking soda. We have two eggs at room temperature. And again, I had to kind of confine stuff into certain bowls, so in this hefty bowl here, <laughs> we have one cup of sugar, a fourth of a cup of vegetable oil, and a third of a cup of honey. And then we have one cup and one fourth of buttermilk in this bowl here. That's what really makes it taste delicious, is that buttermilk cornbread, oh goodness. Okay, then when it comes to tools, this is not obviously needed. This is an induction stove top. This is so I can film with convenience facing straight ahead at you. You will need a mixing bowl, you'll need a whisk, a rubber spatula, and you'll want a big casserole dish for your chili. I usually go ham when I make chili, you make this big thing of it. I don't know why, I don't even like it that much, but like after two eatings of it, I'm like, all right, I'm good. But I only have this size for this induction stove top, so, which is good, we need to keep it small because we're also going to be fitting cornbread batter on top of this. So let's, let's get the chili started because the cornbread is just a whip it together and pour it on top kind of thing. And I think that will be the best kind of order of operations. So chili, make the batter, pour everything in the casserole dish and put it in the oven. So let's start, shall we? <laughs> that was a long intro, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> and a stick of butter. I do this every time. I like move my ingredients and realize I never said it. A half a cup or a stick of butter. There you go. To start on the chili, I've got my little oven here, my little stove, at like a medium high, not really, like a little bit above medium heat. I'm gonna toss in just a little splishy splash of olive oil, and then my onions and garlic. And I'm just gonna toss this around so that it gets coated in the oil. So I'm just gonna saute this until it's translucent. I wanna get these a little more cooked before I toss in the turkey, so it kinda melts into the mix. Okay, so now that those have cooked a bit, I'm gonna add my turkey. And I don't know if I mentioned, that's one pound. And I'm just gonna crush it up, cut it up into a bunch of little pieces, and brown it, just until it's nice and brown. While that's browning, let's mix together our cornbread ingredients because it's pretty fast after this. I'm gonna start by melting my butter. Let's give this another stir. Obviously this might be more ideal in like a bigger pan, <laughs> like a saute pan, but I'm lazy. I didn't wanna dirty two dishes. We're basically just gonna cook this until there's not a lot of leftover juices, till the onion juice has kind of evaporated and most of the fat has cooked off of the turkey. Okay, so we're gonna mix our dry ingredients into our mixing bowl. That is our flour and cornmeal and our active ingredients, plus salt. Just gonna toss that around with a fork, get those active ingredients suspended in the flour and cornmeal. All right, so now what we're gonna do is my butter has been melted. I'm gonna grab my sugar, honey, oil mixture here. I'm gonna pour the butter into it Grab my fork and mix it together until it's incorporated. The hot butter will hopefully kind of break down that honey and the sugar a bit. Stir this up again. Aha! All right, not very much liquid left down there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our chili packet, specifically to the meat and onions and stir that around to coat the meat and onions and garlic. All right, now I'm gonna add my carrots. We're gonna add our bell pepper. I have drained and rinsed my beans. We're gonna add these in here. We got a full pot, jeez. Let's add our tomato, I've already opened it. 
good. Oh Lord, this is so full. <laughs> good, all right. Okay, we're gonna add a squeezy of tomato paste, like a tablespoon. And then I'm gonna fill this up with a little bit of water. Grab my spatula and just stir that water around. Get all the tomatoey goodness from the sides. And pour it in. All right, I'll show you a close up. We're gonna put this on low and cover it until our batter is ready to go. Here we are. You can see the beautiful beans, the bell pepper, the carrots. The kidney beans are gorgeous. And um, it's not super watery just yet. It will cook down some more, obviously, while it's in the oven. So, let's make cornbread. So back to what we were doing here. We mixed the butter with the honey, oil, and sugar. It's not really coming together that great. It's kind of cold in my house. Maybe I'll throw it in the microwave just to blast it a little, get it a little more liquidous. Liquidous. In the meantime, let's grab our eggs and put them in our buttermilk. And we'll give those a nice whip, just until combined. There, that's a little more together now. We're gonna start with our buttermilk mixture. You're supposed to just add the liquids to the dry. But my buttermilk, it's like room temperature, but my honey mixture here is kind of warm. So I don't want it to mess with my milk, so I'm gonna pour the milk in first. Kinda get that mixed in with the flour and cornmeal and active ingredients. We're gonna add a little bit to start, just so it's not too hot. So mix that together to kind of temper the milk and eggs so we don't get scrambled eggs. And the rest. And we're just gonna mix that with our spatula. It's not hard to mix, it's not thick and goopy. It's very easy. And it says specifically, do not over mix just until everything is combined. You don't see any flour clumps, nothing. Let's check our chili again. So, any cook will tell you, you gotta taste along the way. So let's just get a little bean and a little bit of meat and just try it. That could use a little more salt. I have honey on my hands. That could use a little more salt. And I think a titch of ketchup, just trust me. I like my stuff a little weird. I have not added any salt, if you'll notice. I wanted to keep it neutral with that chili packet first and then kind of control it from then. When I say ketchup, ketchup adds a sweetness, a tomato -eatiness, a vinegariness. I think it's essential in a chili recipe. That's just me. Do whatever you like. But I'm just gonna get, put a good heaps on top. And let's mix it in and then we'll try it again. Mm, perfect. Let's prep our pan. So, my casserole dish is a three quart casserole dish. Just gonna get some olive oil and spray it in there. All right, let's get our oven preheated. This is gonna be 350 degrees. This is very heavy, I need two hands for this. All right, let's pour it in. Ooh, this casserole dish is the perfect size. All right, I'm just gonna mash this out until it's in a nice even layer. This is a lot of food, even with a small saucepan, I still made a huge serving, because I always do. <laughs> Let's just pour the cornbread mixture on top. We're just gonna gently pour so that it doesn't kind of dent the chili. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> it's gonna be a close call. <laughs> Okay, we can't put any more in there because it will overflow. This is definitely gonna be one of those bakes where I'm gonna have to have a cookie sheet underneath it so that if it does spill over, it catches the spillage. So with whatever I have left here, I'll put in a small baking dish and bake it alongside. 
because that's it's a lot of it's a lot of cornbread because I made too much chili. But who can complain, right? Okay. Hold please. <laughs> Okay, I have a cookie sheet lined with tin foil so it doesn't ruin my sheet. I'm gonna put this on top. It has a good 10 pounds right there. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this in my oven now, even though it's not completely preheated, it's pretty close, because um, I really want it to get nice and hot in there. So we're gonna have this in there for about 25 minutes is what the recipe said. I got a really thin layer of cornbread on there, so who knows how much it'll puff up or how long that will take. So I'll kind of tell you when it's done what mine was. I highly suggest, I should have taken some of the chili out and just put it aside, but it's fine. <laughs> Either get a really tall container or do less chili because I'm the queen of too much. <laughs> I'm gonna get this in the oven now. It's in there, ready to go. See you soon, chili. I'm gonna clean up and then when this is done, we're gonna have ourselves some chili. Timer is off. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty, I tell you. I have the extra baking underneath. Let's pull it out. We've got chili. Oh, this is hot. Um, this baked perfectly. It became completely flush with the sides, didn't go crazy. Wasn't a lot of batter, but that's okay. <laughs> the chili kind of peeked through in a couple spots, but I basically gauged if it was ready based on the color of the top. I wanted some nice golden crispy edges, nice even coloration on the top. It turned out perfect. It smells divine. This is like a week and a half's worth of food, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm really excited to try this. So let me show you a close up and then we'll dig right in. Okay. Here we are. Oh, it's so golden and beautiful. You can see the chili out of the bottom. Yay! Almost wish I would have put corn in the chili recipe. <laughs> All right, let's try this. I'm gonna just take my spoon and break in and just take a little corner piece. Oh, I don't know if this batter cooked all the way. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that batter might be a little underdone, but that's okay, because the top is crispy and it's all gonna just mix in anyway. Okay, let's give this bad boy a taste. We got some beans, we got some bell pepper, we got some turkey, and we got a chunk of cornbread right there. It is piping hot, so. You should add some cheese to this, but I want to try it by itself first. Ooh. Okay. I kind of love that the cornbread didn't bake fully that the batter kind of mixed into the chili. Oh my gosh, that tastes so good. Hmm. It may benefit to do a little more of a savory cornbread recipe. Maybe something with some jalapeno and cheddar. Oh, that is good. That is so good. This is good. I'm not even talking because I'm just eating. Sorry. The chili turned out perfect savory, smoky, I love the beans, with some smooth, rich, sweet, cornbready goodness on top. Mmm, the cornbread made it thicker, made it sweeter. Oh, I can get behind this. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Oh, I'm so excited. This is my dinner tonight. <laughs> but this was fantastic. This tastes so good. The cornbread is crisp and crunchy, but soft and sweet and buttery. The chili has some really great smokiness to it. Oh, I'm really excited to hunker down. It's nice and cold out finally. Hunker down with a hot bowl of this in front of the TV. My Christmas lights turned on. It's a dream come true. <laughs> so. 
I highly suggest you make this. Gail, if you make the cornbread, put it in a separate container if you want to try it itself by itself. Um, and I can link the cornbread recipe down below just by itself. The chili recipe, I can't really link because I just did it from my brain. Um, so, you know, I'll try. Um, and then, yeah, I highly suggest you make this. This is definitely a comforting, warm winter meal that I highly suggest. It makes a crap ton <laughs> if you're like me. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like this video. Comment down below what you want me to make next. I really prefer making stuff that you guys wanna see. So like Gail recommending the cornbread, I need some help guys, cause I can keep making random stuff, but I wanna make stuff you wanna see. I wanna say thank you so much to all of my new subscribers. I don't know what happened. I was like, ooh, we're getting close to 100. This is exciting. Boom, not even a whole week later, and I went from 100 subscribers to 128. It's just like some kind of momentum has built up. Um, I didn't post anything last weekend because it was the holiday. So I just appreciate all of you for subscribing. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. And I'm gonna keep making content just for you because that's what I love to do. So thank you for watching. I will see you very soon in my next video. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye.